Hey class, I'm Mr Thornton and I'm going to help you succeed in your GCSE. This lesson, the second part of a three-part lesson where I'm looking at resistance. In this lesson, I'm going to focus on resistance in series. <laughs> I described electrical resistance as being a little like speed bumps on a road. Higher resistance is like a road with more speed bumps, which is more difficult to drive along. This is actually pretty close to what's really going on in a metal component like a wire or a filament in a filament bulb as it conducts electricity. Electrons collide with the metal ions the material's made of. The more collisions, the higher the resistance. The amount of free electrons or other charge carriers, such as dissolved ions in a solution, affects resistance too. If there are more charged particles available to move through the material, you can get a bigger current flowing for a given potential difference. So substances with lots of free electrons, like metals, have much lower resistances than substances where those electrons are trapped by covalent or ionic bonding, such as polymers or salts. This also explains why graphite can conduct electricity. Although each individual layer of the graphite is held together by strong covalent bonds where the electrons are trapped, between those layers are delocalized electrons, just like in a metal, which are free to move around. When you picture those electrons being a bit like cars on a road with speed bumps, it becomes much easier to visualize what's going on as electrons move through a conductor. And that makes it easier not just to learn by rote how resistance works, but to understand it well enough to be able to figure out what's going to happen in any given situation. First, let's consider a series circuit. The word series just means one thing after another in a particular order, just like a TV series, a series of football matches, or the World Series of Baseball. It's the same meaning in circuits. Components which are in series are just one after another. You may be looking at a part of a circuit, like this, where we would say the components are in series with each other, or you might look at an entire circuit like this, where everything is in series. This is a series circuit, where as the electricity flows around the loop, it passes through the components one after another in order. Let's imagine we have a 3 ohm resistor in series with a 4 ohm resistor. Going back to our car analogy, the first one is a section of road with three speed bumps, and the second one is a section of road with four speed bumps. For a car to get from one end to the other, it has no choice but to drive over all of them, a total of seven speed bumps. So the total resistance is just seven ohms. You just add the resistances together. In fact, we could replace our two resistors with a single seven ohm resistor and our circuit would work the same. We call this an equivalent resistance. That is our three ohm resistor and our four ohm resistor have an equivalent resistance of seven ohms. It's a complicated sounding name for what I'm sure is a really obvious concept to you. If you had a piece of wire with a resistance of five ohms and you doubled the length of it, your longer piece of wire would have twice the distance for the electricity to flow, so it would have twice the resistance, 10 ohms. Rather than there just being one electron moving through our components, we've actually got lots of them. Uh, a little bit like a road which has got lots and lots of cars in it rather than just one car. And this is all that an electrical current is. Every car on our road has to take the same route. So no matter where we measure the current or the amount of cars passing a point, and it could be here or here or here, the same number of cars is going past. So the current is the same, no matter where we measure it. This is a really important point. The current is exactly the same through all the components in series. So in a circuit like this, no matter where we put the ammeter to measure the current in amps, we always get the same reading. Current doesn't get used up, just like our cars on a road don't disappear as they move along it. This is why ammeters always have to be in series with the component you're measuring the current through. All of the current has to flow through the ammeter too. Now I understand, that may feel a little counterintuitive, right? Clearly something gets used up, otherwise batteries wouldn't run down. So what is it that gets used up? Well, it's actually the energy that the current is carrying. The current has energy when it leaves the power supply. It's got electrical potential energy. And as it moves through the components, it's that potential energy which gets used up. A little bit like the petrol in our cars. Remember, that's the car's energy source in the form of chemical potential energy. This energy is being used up as they struggle along the bumpy road. 
Now, strictly speaking, we should say that the energy is transferred, not used up. It's just changed into other things like kinetic energy and heat energy. However, I'm going to stick with saying used up for now just to keep things simple. Now, because the potential energy gets used up, there's a difference in potential energy between the start of a section of road and the end of a section of road. A potential difference. And we measure that potential difference in volts. We often just call potential difference voltage. They're the same thing. And you shouldn't lose marks for writing voltage on an exam if you were talking about potential difference, but the exam board will always use the term potential difference in a question. So if you see the phrase potential difference, they just mean voltage and it's measured, remember, in volts. The key thing to remember though, whether you're using the term voltage or potential difference, is that we're just talking about energy changes. The sections of the road with the greatest resistance, that is the sections of the road with the most speed bumps, take the most energy to get along. So if you measure the potential difference across components in series, you'll see that the component with the biggest resistance gets the biggest share of the total potential difference. If they both have the same resistance, then of course they get equal shares. But the key thing to remember is that bigger resistances get a bigger share of the energy, that is, a bigger share of the potential difference. If we put a variable resistor here, then we could actively change how big of a share of the total potential difference other components get. Uh, turning it all the way up would give the variable resistor a bigger share and the other fixed resistances a smaller share. Turning it all the way down would have the opposite effect. Components like thermistors and light-dependent resistors, or LDRs, are used in this way, turning the temperature or the amount of light into a voltage value and letting us automate things like heating, air conditioning, and security lighting. The total potential difference across all of the components adds up to whatever potential difference we put into the circuit. Also note that when we measure the potential difference, we're comparing energy at two different points, usually before and after a component to see how much energy has been used up. Our voltmeter has to connect to both of these points to do a comparison. So the voltmeter is always connected in parallel, like this. In summary then, in a series circuit, the current is the same through all the components in series, and we measure that with an ammeter in series too. The total energy, the potential difference, is shared out across the components and we measure that with a voltmeter in parallel. You don't need to be able to calculate exactly what share of the potential difference individual components get, you just need to know that the bigger resistances get a bigger share of the total potential difference because it takes more energy for the current to flow through them. That covers resistance in series, and in my next video, I'll finish the resistance topic by looking at resistance in parallel. I hope that video really helped you. If it did, it really helps my channel when you like, subscribe, and share these videos. Let people know I'm going to succeed in my GCSE. All the links and info for this video are in the description, and please let me know what you thought in the comments or on Twitter at MrThorntonUK, or use the hashtag SucceedInMyGCSE. There are loads more GCSE science videos on my channel too. Here's another one which YouTube thinks you might find useful. You can click my picture just here to subscribe, click down there to check how well you understood with the Snap Quiz website and app, and you can click just here to get my revision guides. Good luck in your GCSEs everyone, and thanks very much for watching.